word of God and see the power of God's word released in your life. In Hebrews 10, 23, the Bible says, Hold fast to the confession of your faith without wavering. For he who promised, there it is again, is faithful. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 13, Since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believe, therefore I spoke. We also believe, and therefore do we speak. You can always tell what somebody believes when they open their mouth. The Bible says the angels listen to our words. They are ministering spirits sent forth to minister for the heirs of salvation. If you can say no good things, say nothing. Do not speak death over your life. Bite your tongue. Because your tongue is as the hand of a ready writer. Psalm 45 verse 1 says. James chapter 2 says you bless or you curse your life with the words of your mouth. Don't speak your disappointments. Don't declare your setbacks. Speak the promise of God. Like that woman with the issue of blood in Mark chapter 5. The Bible says she said, if I can only touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. The literal translation, she said and she kept on saying. If I can only touch the hem of his garment, by Jesus' stripes I'm healed. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Let the weak say, I am strong. I can tell you so many testimonies. When I went into the army in 1983, I had to go for knee surgery. I was on the officer's course. I knew God's will for me was to be a lieutenant to train the future officers. I was clear upon, about the will, will of God. I had the most excruciating pains in my knees and I had to go for an operation after having been to the doctors, diagnosed. I knew going for that operation would throw me off the course and that would take my influence away. I knew God's purpose for me was to be a leader to influence other people with the gospel of Jesus. I had to go through that pain. So I made up my mind to believe the word of God. And I had my little New Testament, pocket-sized New Testament. Every time we had a smoke break, everybody would puff I would draw on the Word of God, and I would read the Bible, but for a few minutes I would read the Bible, and as we would run, and everybody said, even though they were not married, we used to sing these stupid songs, I left, I left, I left my wife and my kids at home, and I left, I left my wife and my kids at home, and I left, look, ha, look, ha. what did I say? I didn't say I left my wife and my kids at home, because I didn't have no wife and no kids. I ran with those pains in my knees. And I said, by Jesus stripes, I'm healed. By Jesus stripes, I'm healed. By Jesus stripes, I'm healed. Look, ha, look, ha, look. By Jesus. Oh, come on, by Jesus stripes, I'm healed. Declare the word of the Lord whether you feel like it or not. And again, I can tell you, it wasn't a miracle. It wasn't instant. But throughout the year, the pain got left less. And eventually the pain left me. And I qualified to fulfill the will of God for my life. Let me tell you something. You're going to be healed. You're going to recover. You're going to rise up to what God has called you to rise up to. You're going to accomplish what God called you to accomplish. Do not doubt the promises of God. Just keep running, looking unto Jesus. Hebrews chapter 12. By Jesus' stripes I'm healed. My God shall supply all my needs. What God has blessed cannot be cursed. Our marriage is blessed. Our children are blessed. The blessing of God is upon us. Speak the word of God. When you go through the valley of the shadow of death, when it feels like you're going through hell, learn from David who said, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, out of his mouth, I will fear no evil. For the Lord is with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Psalm 91. A thousand will fall at my side. He said, I will say of the Lord, you are my refuge. You are my fortress. You are my God. In you I trust. I will say of the Lord. I will say of the Lord. Nothing happens until you say of the Lord. You speak the word of God. Do not be a silent Christian. Speak the word of the Lord. Jairus said, come lay your hands on my little girl and she will live. Sometimes you have to look yourself in the mirror and say, you're not too bad. You're a man of God. You're anointed. You have to look yourself in the eyes and say, you're going to make it. You have to talk to yourself because many other voices talk to you. And you have to say, you're going to live. You're going to fulfill your destiny. You're going to make it. You're never going to go into neutral and doubt the promises of God. Look yourself in the eye. 
Go home to the mirror. Look yourself in the eye and talk to yourself and say to yourself, you will run this race. You will finish your course. You will glorify God. Come on. If you believe it today, say amen in Jesus' name. Number three, two minutes and I'm finished. You choose life by acting on the word. You have to believe the word of God. You have to declare the word of God. You have to do the word of God. James 1.22, the Bible says, but be doers of the word of God, not hearers only deceiving your own selves. You have to do what God says. People want to see results and then believe God. God says, believe me. Act on my word, then you will see results. Peter stepped out of the boat. When he stepped out of the boat, he walked. He did what he never could do. You'll never know what you can do until you act on the word of God. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. You will not please God apart from faith. You have to believe what God's word says. I know it doesn't make sense. It doesn't have to. We are called to be like children, not figure everything out. 1 Corinthians 2, the Bible says, the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit. It's foolishness to him. A lady came to me one day. She said, Pastor, it cannot be so simple. You mean all I have to do is say what God says? I said, yes. She said, it can't be as simple as that. Somebody else came and debated me, with me one day about people getting saved. And they said, all these people that come to the altars every week, surely they cannot be saved. I said, why not? They said, it's too easy. I said, exactly. It's too easy. People want to work for something. God says, believe me. God says, trust me. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your paths. That Ethiopian, when Philip joined his chariot and he saw water, he said, what prevents me from being baptized? He said, believe on the Lord Jesus. He said, I believe. As simple as that, Monique. I believe in Jesus. Saved. Not a course. Not a culture. I believe. Born again. Greatest miracle. Translated out of darkness into the kingdom of God. I believe. I believe. Acting on that belief. The promise of God for your life. The word of God. The logos and the rhema of God. The revelation. Wanting you to play in the World Cup. You're not on the tour now, but we don't look at that. We look to the promise of God. We look for the will of God. That injury is temporal. What you're going through is temporal. God's word is eternal. Get your eyes back on the word of God and choose life and act on the word of God. Don't sit there negative, passive. Do what you can do. The Bible says a man's harvest in life is based entirely upon the seed he has sown. Galatians 6 verse 7, the J.B. Phillips translation. You want to get a job? Believe God. Declare it and go look for a job. Qualify yourself. Be the best you that you possibly can be. You want to be a top rugby player, then practice harder than anybody else. You want a top job, then be willing to start at the bottom and have the greatest integrity. Be the hardest worker and watch the favor of God promote you because of your excellence and because of how you apply yourself in the job. Come on. We're not talking about a faith that is passive, but we're talking about a faith that is active. In James, the Bible says, faith without works is dead. You want a better harvest, you need to sow better seed. It's never going to change. You live by the law of seed time and harvest. What you sow, you will reap. You are yet today because God still has a destiny for your life. You are not dead because you are not done. You have a future. You have a tomorrow. The fact that you still breathe means that God still has a future. I don't know what it is, but I know it is great. And I'm praying that God will revive hope. That God by His Spirit will breathe upon you. Sitting here in Pretoria, there in Bloemfontein, in Johannesburg, East Rand, in Khabarone, Welcome George, all our great churches across the country with us this morning, sitting there in prison. He's a God of hope. He's a God that is faithful. Watching that television set this morning, he's a God of hope. 
He wants to give you a future. But you have to choose life. Every head bowed, every eye closed, no one moving at this point in time. You say, Pastor, you're talking to me. I want to get right with Jesus today. I realize that I'm lost. If I die today, I don't even think I'll go to heaven. I'm sitting here today filled with disappointment. The good news this morning is it doesn't matter what you've done, where you've been, how low you have sunk. What matters this morning is the love that God has for you. That 2,000 years ago, Jesus died for you. And He said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Your good works will not get you to heaven. Being a good person will not get you to heaven. Reading your Bible every day will not get you to heaven. God says, I put before you life and death, blessing and cursing. That life is in my Son, Jesus Christ. In John chapter 3, Jesus said, you must be born again. In 1 John chapter 5, He said, he that has the Son has life. He that does not have the Son does not have life. The Afrikaans say, hy wat die Seen het, het die lewe. Hy wat die Seen van God nie het, nie het nie die lewe nie. Ek het jarrelang kerk toe gegaan, jarrelang my Bijbel gelees. Elke hand gebid by die voet van my bed. Heere, vergeef my genadiglik al my sondes om die naam zo'n wil. Geen verhouding met Jesus gehad nie. Ek het een godsdienst gehad. Tot iemand my die vraag gevraag het en gesê, Adbosof, as jy vandag sterwe, sal jy jimmel toe gaan? Toe weet ek nie. Ek wou jimmel toe gaan, maar ek het nie geweet nie. It got my attention. I realized that although I was living a certain life, I did not know Jesus. I'm asking you that question because it's a defining question. If you die today, do you know that you'll go to heaven? If not, you can choose life. You're sitting here today at one time, you served God, but you've grown cold and you've wandered away from Him. Today, the Holy Spirit is calling you to come back. Choose life. Because that path you are going down will not bring the peace you think it will. Choose life. Forget the person next to you. Forget your boyfriend, your girlfriend today. Jesus is talking to you. I put before you life and death, blessing and cursing. No one moving, thank you. You say, yes, pastor, I hear your voice. I hear the voice of God. I need to choose life. I mean, life is so fragile. Sometimes people are young. The next week we say, where is that person? And that person is gone. Passed away in the week. You're sitting here today. The only guarantee you have is this moment. To open your heart to Jesus.